We have truly been blessed on this morning. And before I go forward, I just wanted to acknowledge the uh, two young ladies that kind of spearheaded our Black History Month and uh, organized on this day. And so I think I'd be remiss if I did not acknowledge these two sisters because they've been working extremely hard. So Sister Latrice Mosley-Smith, as she may have stepped out, but let's say praise the Lord for her. And uh, Sister Stacy. Come on in, Sister Stacy. Amen. Working triple time, overtime. And then um, not only that, but then um, she's not a part of a Greek letter organiza organization, but she is a part of the Greek, the Green organization. My first lady, Sister Delonda Green. She holds it down in our house. Amen. And she does so much to uh, help me out. And so without her, I could not be as effective as I am. I just want to thank everybody who has come out, all of those who participated. Brother Brock, I thank you for that message. And we're going to have a part two, amen? <laughs> because you had a whole lot to say there, and we don't want to uh, miss out what the good Lord has placed inside of you. And he just has an amazing story. You're going to see part two of him after my sermon, amen? <laughs> so let's go to the right to the word of God. We're going to be in the book of John. Chapter number 21, and at verse 15 through 20. So the book of John, chapter 21, verses 15 through 20. 11. Thank you, sir. Let's say praise the Lord, Brother Chris over there helping me out. We all need help. Uh, so beginning in verse number 11, Simon Peter went up and dragged a net to land full of large fish, 153, and although there were so many, the net was not broken. Jesus said to them, come and eat breakfast, yet none of his disciples dared ask him, who are you? Knowing that it was the Lord, Jesus then came and took the bread and gave it to them, and likewise the fish. This is now the third time that Jesus showed himself to his disciples after he had raised them from the dead. So when they had eaten breakfast, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of Jonah, do you love me more than these? He said to him, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. He said to them, him, feed my lambs. He said to him again a second time, Simon, son of Jonah, do you love me? He said to him, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. He said to him, tend my sheep. He said to him then a third time, Simon, son of Jonah, do you love me? Peter was grieved because he had said to him, the third time, do you love me? And he said to him, Lord, you know all things. You know that I love you. And Jesus said to him, feed my sheep. Most assuredly, I say to you, when you were younger, you girded yourself and walked where you wish. But when you are old, you will stretch out your hands and another will gird you and carry you where you do not wish. This he spoke, signifying by what, what death he would glorify God. And when he had spoken this, he said to him, Peter, follow me. And all of God's people said? Amen. If I could borrow a line from my good friend Spike Lee, <clears throat> if he could update the scriptures. Spike Lee, Jesus would speak through Spike Lee. And he'd say, tell your neighbor, tell your neighbor. Say, neighbor, I don't care what you do, but make sure you do the right thing. Today, we live in a society or culture that believes in everything but doing the right thing. Today is our goal not to do the right thing, but to do, somebody say, your thing. Your thing. Do your thing, just don't get caught. <laughs> Today, we're in an environment to get your hustle on. How can I get over is all about it. Let's make a deal. From the shopping center to the car dealer. From Amazon to eBay to Yobay. Let's make a deal. From Jenny Craig to Weight Watchers. It's all about let's make a deal. How can I get more out of life by doing less? Tell your neighbor, let's make a deal. 
This mentality is carried over into how we view and how we respond to our God. We have repositioned God from sitting on the throne of your life to now being on sale in your life. Let's make a deal. God, if you do this, then I would do that. Or if I do this, then you would do that. Tell your neighbor the sale is over. It has expired. You see, the Holy Spirit is not for sale. In Acts 8 and 18, when Simon the sorcerer saw that the Spirit was given to the apostles when it laying on their hands and he went and offered money and said, give me this ability. But the anointing is not free. It costs you something. Our God is not a God that's on sale. He's not a God that you and I can pull down from reigning on his throne. We serve a God that demands and requires that each of us humble ourselves so that our heart's desire and our goals in life is not about how I get over in life, but more importantly, how can I do the right things in life? From this day forward, I want to ring in your mind, ring in your conscience, wherever you go, whatever you're about to do. I want these words to just hold you like a rope could hold you. Am I about to do the right thing? Doing the right thing in life, not because it's necessarily going to benefit you. God is trying to graduate us from doing the right thing to get the right thing, to doing the right thing just because it's right. <laughs> See, why do you say that, Brother Green? Because sometimes in life, you can do the right thing and get wrong results. And that does not give us an excuse or an alibi to do the right, the wrong things. God is trying to change our hearts and our minds and our souls that we are driven by his spirit of righteousness and righteousness alone. It's all about doing the right thing. In our text this morning, we have the courageous, the confident, the committed disciple that we all know as Peter. If there's anybody in the Bible that we should all identify with, tell your neighbor, it's Peter. <laughs> Peter's always in trouble, <laughs> always making mistakes. Peter gives each and every last one of us a little hope. <laughs> Why is that? Because Peter, he wants to do the right things in life. But he often, often finds himself, tell your neighbor, doing the wrong things. In Matthew 16 and 15 through 16, Peter doing the right thing. Jesus asked the disciples, who do the people say that I am? Who do you say I am? And then Peter responds, thou art the Christ, thou art the Lord. And Jesus responds, for flesh and blood is not given to you, but the Father has revealed this to you. Tell your neighbor, doing the right thing. But right then in John 13 and 8, Peter doing the wrong thing. When Jesus says, I must wash your feet, and Peter says, never, Lord, never, never, never. Get away from me. And Jesus said, if I don't, you will have no parts of me doing the wrong things. In Matthew 14, 29 through 30, doing the right thing, he sees Jesus walking on the water, and Peter says, Lord, bid me to come. And Peter does the right thing and steps outside the boat. But then two seconds later, he's doing the right thing, but then he takes his eyes off of the Lord and starts looking down, and he starts thinking, tell your neighbor, doing the wrong thing. In John 18, Peter confessing that, Lord, I'm committed to you. Lord, I would never leave you. Lord, I would never deny you. Confessing the right things. But later on, as we see in our text this morning, when the heat is on, Peter denies the Lord three times. 
You see, in each of these situations, Peter does the wrong thing. Somebody say, why does he do the wrong thing? Because his mouth is bigger than his heart. Peter has no problem with professing his love for Christ, but Christ's love did not possess him. Peter had a need to grow in his true love for Christ. You see, you and I, Christ is always pursuing us. He's always trying to draw us closer to him. And in our sinful acts and our sinful behavior, we try to escape. We try to run from God's love. But we cannot. Impulsive Peter, who had the big mouth when there was no pressure, finds himself now being transformed from being a big mouth to now being a shy individual. When Peter is confronted, do you know Jesus? I don't know Jesus. Jesus who? Peter, in John 18 and 18, when they confronted him, said, surely you know this man. People, no, I don't know him. What is Peter doing? Peter's over there by the charcoal fire warming himself. What we get out of this is, even though Peter makes some bad choices, his bad choices doesn't distance him from Jesus' love. Because now here in our text, Peter here ran from Jesus. Now you see Jesus running to Peter. Jesus, Peter was warming himself in the coals trying to avoid Jesus. But now Jesus stands on the the beach, next to the warm coals, preparing him for a meal. Peter, you thought you got away from me. Tell your neighbor, you can run, but you can't escape his love. It's love check now. Not baggage check, love check. Are we not doing what is right in life? because we're too busy warming ourselves? Warming ourselves in the comfort of our careers, warming ourselves in the comfort of our children, in the comfort of our cash in the bank, in the comfort of ourselves, I gotta have this Caribbean vacation. Are we warming ourselves in the comfort of this flesh? The comfort of being around friends who won't challenge me. Are we too busy warming ourselves with the fake lies of the devil who comes to deceive, to destroy, and to divide? You see, in each of these situations, Peter had the right intentions, but he had the wrong implementation. How do we grow from having good and right intentions to now having the right implementation of the right results in our life. Jesus takes Peter to the true school of love. Not the love of a one night stand. Not the love of an instant message. Not the love of blackdating.com or eHarmony.com. You see, love has nothing to do with our intentions in life. Love, more importantly, has everything to do with your integrity in life. Integrity is the centered principle on doing what is right, no matter what the personal cost to your life. That's true integrity. Dr. Henry Cloud says, to have integrity is to have the capacity or the courage to meet the demands of reality, to live in the light, to live in the truth, to embrace the truth of life, to live a life of character and not a life of confusion. True life, true love, it costs the individual in the interest of doing what is right and what is best. 
Tell your neighbor, true love is never free. True love, it costs. It costs you to love your children. It costs you to love your parents and your siblings. It costs you to love your friends. It costs you to love your church. Divine nine, it costs you to love your fraternity or sorority. You say, what did it mean it cost me? It cost you money out your pocket. And if I go back in the day, it cost you a little pain on your body. Sacrificing the shame, cutting off all your hair, being belittled. Treated not like a sorrow, not like a friend, but being treated like an enemy. You love this organization so much, you're willing to take a hit for it. If only we could take a hit for the Lord the way we take a hit for these organizations. I think the Lord would say you're on the right track. Tell your neighbor, it cost you. It cost our teachers to prepare to educate their students every day. I thought I'd get one shout. It cost our policemen and firemen to protect and serve our community. And life is not about me. It's about doing the right thing. And when you're willing to do the right thing, it's never easy. The right thing is not the popular choice. The right thing is the choice that's going to cost you. It costs you to love God. Somebody said, how does it cost me to love God? If it costs God to love you, why is it not going to cost you to love him? You see, if I'm going to love God, this holy God, this pure God, this mighty God, if I'm going to love that God, then it's going to cost me to lose this nasty mouth. It's going to cost me to lose this negative attitude. It's going to cost me to lose the doubt. It's going to cost me to lose being regretful. It's going to cost me from being bitter and jealous. It's going to cost me from hanging out at the bar and hanging out at the club, it's going to cost me to hang out with Jesus. If you want to do the right thing in life, you got to be willing to take the cost of losing your bad behaviors. In Ephesians 4 and 22, the Apostle Paul tells us, you were taught with regard to your former way of it's going to cost you. Cost you how? You got to put off your old self, which is being corrupted and being deceitful, that you might be made new in your attitude, new in your mind, and to put on, somebody say, your new self, created in the likeness and the greatness of God. Jesus said, if you want to follow me, you must be willing to deny yourself. Take up your cross. And check this out. It would cost you more for keeping your bad habits than giving up your bad habits. But there's hope. In spite of Peter's challenges for doing the right thing, Jesus never abandons him. Despite Peter and his failures and doing the wrong thing, Jesus is right here to help Peter. Jesus clearly understands that failure is not final in life. I could tell your neighbor, failure, failure. is a part of life. Jesus understands the call and demand on Peter's life is to be a leader for the kingdom. 
And whenever there is a demand on your life to do something great, there's always going to be a devil trying to stop you in your steps. But don't fear. Don't go into panic mode. I have some good news for you this morning. Jesus prayed for you. Jesus interceding for you. Jesus before the throne of God praying. As he says in Luke 22, Simon, Simon, Satan has desired to sift you, to destroy you as we. But the good news, I have prayed for you that your faith fail you not. And when I have restored you, you go and restore your brothers. So those of us who have been blessed, those of us God has poured out his overwhelming, abundant love and grace deep down on the inside of our hearts and our minds. Those God has snatched out of the hands of the enemy. Those God has changed my mouth from filthiness to faithfulness. Those God has changed me from being a liar to being a man of honesty and truth. Those God has put a couple of bucks in your pocket. Those of you God has moved from Cabrini Green to Chicago Heights or to Country Club Hills or to Olympia Hills or Frankfurt or wherever. God is saying you have a responsibility. We have a responsibility to reach back, pull up and bring our sisters and brothers back up and let them know this God that blessed me will bless you. Can I get an amen? Jesus' message to Peter and Jesus' message to each of us today. When it comes to failure, it's not that we're not going to fail. But when you do fail, take this quote from John Maxwell. Tell your neighbor, when you do fail, just fail forward. Don't fail back. Don't fail down. Don't fail out of bounds. Just fail forward. Because greater is he that is within you than he that is within the world. And I believe there's more God in front of me than God behind me. But if I keep staying back in my sins over here, I can never take advantage of the God that's over here. Tell your neighbor, I ain't going back. I'm going forward in life to see and to live in the precious promises of that God. Delta, y'all ain't got to stay quiet. You can shout too. Say amen. Peter's failure is served as a door to open up for Jesus to fix his faith. Jesus understood that Peter, you're not perfect. I'm not looking for a perfect individual. I'm not looking for somebody who's popular. I'm not looking for the privileged child. I'm not looking for the poor child. Jesus said, I'm looking for somebody who got a pure heart. I'm looking for somebody who has a desire and a yearning. Jesus said, I want somebody to have the mind and I, like Isaiah, woe is me for I am undone because of a man of unclean lips. Be honest with who you are and let the Lord know. Lord, cleanse me. Lord, wash me. Lord, turn me around. I can't make it without you. Lord, I need you. He wants somebody with that broken, that contrite spirit. Peter, I have good news for you. He meets Peter right where he is. And he asked him three questions. Peter, do you love me? In the Greek, there are three words for love. There's one word for love that gets us all in trouble. Somebody say eros. That's erotic love. The other word is phileo. Somebody say phileo. phileo. That's brotherly love. It's the city of Philadelphia, brotherly love. But then there is, you might say, agape love. agape love. This is the love where God is trying to mature us and grow each of us. This is the love where there are no strings attached. This is the love where there's no manipulation. 
This is the love where there are no alternative motives. This is the love where there is no fake. This is the purest, the most sincerest form of love. Everybody say agape love. love. Jesus asked Peter three times, Peter, do you love me? The first time Jesus asked him, Jesus asked him agape love. Peter, do you agape love me? And Peter responds with, yes, Lord, I phileo, brotherly love. The next time Jesus asked him, he says, Peter, do you agape love me? Once again, and Peter responds, yes, Lord, I phileo love you two times. But the third time, a change happens. Jesus says, Peter, will you phileo love me? Peter says, Lord, you know everything. You know I'm guilty. You know there's no hope for me. Yes, Lord, I phileo love you. Brother Green, what are you trying to say right here? I'm trying to say that God's love is so great that he understands your deficit and your deficiencies in your love. And because your love can't come up to me, I'm just going to step down and come and give you some brotherly love. I know you're stuck in that seat, but I'm going to give you some power. It's called the Holy Ghost power. And this is some love that will never leave you nor forsake you. Tell your neighbor it's time for some agape love. And Jesus, I'll meet you with some filet of love. But just bring me some love. I got some good news for y'all this morning. Peter, the reason why I can love you where you are, the reason why I can love you because you failed me, the reason why I can love you with your big mouth, the reason why I can love you when you turned your back on me and I was going to the cross and I needed you most, but you was over there warming yourself. Peter, what I want to let you know, Peter, that in life, everybody needs an HBCU. Tell your neighbor, everybody needs an HBCU. Say, what do you mean? Peter needed an HBCU back over 2,000 years ago. But what are you talking about, Brother Green? Peter needed. Jesus was saying the reason why I can take you where you are, Deacon Miller, is because somebody say his blood will cover you. It will cover your faults. But check this out. I got to shout. His blood will cover you. His blood will cover you. Tell your neighbor. His blood will cover you. His blood will cover you. His blood will cover you. I can't stop saying it. His blood will cover you. Tell me his blood will cover you. But not only would it cover you, tell your neighbor his blood will cleanse you. It'll wipe you clean. White as snow. Tell your neighbor his blood it will cover you. It will cleanse you. But not only will it cover you, not only will it cleanse you, tell your neighbor, his blood will change you. Change you from an ain't to a saint. Tell your neighbor, his blood will change you. I got good news for everybody right now. Get ready. Get ready. Get ready. Get ready. Get ready. Get ready. His blood, it covers you. It cleanses you. It changes you. All my brothers and sisters, Jesus just want me to just drop this on you. I don't know where you are in your life. I don't know how small your bank account. I don't know how crazy your life is. But God told me to just drop this right down here at Life Church. Tell your neighbor, Jesus came to help the brothers come up. Come up. Tell your neighbor, you coming up? Tell you coming up? You coming up? I ain't going down, I'm coming up. Coming up. Lift up some hands. Let's praise him. Let's worship him. Let's magnify him. He deserves the praise. (laughs) He deserves the glory.
You see, Jesus did the right thing. He went to the cross. He stayed on the cross. He did the right thing. Then you and I can do the right thing. He said, Peter, because I've cleansed you, because I've covered you, because I've changed you, because I made it so you can come up. Peter, feed my sheep. Feed my lambs. Feed them, Peter. You have a responsibility, Peter, to feed my sheep. You see, God has always used HBCUs. In the Bible, he used HBCUs. He used HBCUs. He used Tennessee State to give us an Oprah Winfrey. He used Howard University to give us a third good Marshall. He used the Kentucky State to get to give us Whitney Young. He used the FAMU to give us Common. He used HBCUs to impact our communities. Jesus told Peter, feed my sheep. Jesus speaking to you and I today because you've been cleansed, because you've been covered, because you've been changed, because God has brought you up. Jesus speaking to us today, feed my sheep. Don't feed them lies. Don't feed them filth. Don't feed them doubt. Feed them my love. Feed them my gospel. Let's get up on our feet because it's time to feed our community. It's time to come together. Alphas and Kappas, Alphas and Qs, Deltas and AKA, Sigma Gamma Rho. It's time for us all to come. Me, find me. Tell your neighbor, we all need an HBCU. We all. You may not be a part of a Greek led organization, but tell your neighbor I'm part of one organization and tell your neighbor that organization say it's called Father, Father Son, Son, Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. Now, if I was an Alpha, Alpha, what is your sound? Give me your sound, Alpha. A5. A5 in the house. If I asked the Deltas to say something, Deltas would say what? If I asked the AKs to say, you would say what? If I asked the Zetas in the house to say something, Zetas would say what? Okay, amen. But well, we all have our calling. Any captains in the house, say yo. Right? But we as God's children, no matter what your Greek letter organization is concerned, because God says, I ain't looking on the outside. God say, when I look at you, I want to see what's in your heart. And when I look at your heart, I want to see the blood. I want to see the blood stains of Jesus on the inside of your heart. And so those of us who've been saved, those of us who've been born again, we all have a rallying cry. And when we deep down in our backs, we know what our, our cry is. Tell your neighbor, we all can cry out, hallelujah, hallelujah. 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 Thank God for saving me. Thank God for raising me, for keeping me, for making me. That's the highest praise. Hallelujah. A cute dog can't compete with a hallelujah. That's the highest praise. God wants us. He wants us to do the right thing. We thought we were doing the right thing when I crossed those sands. But God wants us to do the right thing by saying hallelujah. Giving him the highest praise. Giving him the honor and the glory. And that may be somebody here today who's come in who does not know the Lord Jesus Christ. Somebody in here, you've heard something. You didn't come in with anticipation of surrendering to the Lord. But God is speaking to your heart. And now you hear the Lord speaking to you to do the right thing. Now is the time. Now is the moment. Tell your neighbor, just say yes. To rise from your seat and to come. The doors of the church are open. Will we offer you Jesus, the one who never leaves you, the one who will never forsake you, the one as he came to Peter when he should have just wrote Peter off, but because of his love, the one who never stops loving you. That's the message. This is a love that never gives up. This is a love that God wants to offer to everyone. As we said, his blood is there to cover us to change us and to keep us. Is there one here today? There may be somebody here saying, you know what, I'm already baptized, I'm already saved, but I need a church home. If that's you here today, the doors of the church are open. But Life Church, we're a new church seeking to do God's will, seeking to be a blessing to this community, seeking to be his lifeline 
to help you live the best life that God has predestined for your life. Is there one here today where you say, yes, this is the day. This is the day. If that's you, get up, come on up. And say praise the Lord. Amen. Say praise the Lord. God bless you, brother. Stand right here. Is there another where you felt the Lord speaking to your heart, speaking to your soul? Were you ready to say, yes, Lord? We say yes to all that craziness in the world. Now God wants us to say yes to him. Yes to his way. If not, we say praise the Lord. We thank everybody for coming out. And now we're going to prepare ourselves. We're going to prepare ourselves. We're going to say happy birthday. Say praise the Lord. We got a happy birthday cake after service. After service, we had a happy birthday cake, but we got the Deltas. They have to do a quick little step real quick. And then we do a happy birthday. Amen. So let's prepare our hearts. We're going to be treated um, by the ladies of Delta Sigma Theta. They're going to come and give us a brief little step. Amen. Somebody say, in the church. In the church. Amen. Amen. We've anointed the place. Amen. They up under the spirit of the living God. Amen. So, all right. So, um, so we do something a little bit creative, but this is what it's all about. Coming together as community. All right. And so that's why we stepped out on the risk curve and we say, yes, we will have them come in and uh, they will step. So at this time, let's prepare our hearts and minds for them. If you can move that speaker to the side and move this one mic. And let's say praise the Lord for the ladies of Delta Sigma Theta from Joliet. Amen. One day, when the glory comes, it will be ours, it will be ours, oh, one day, when the war is won, we will be sure, we will be sure, oh, oh glory, glory, oh, glory, glory. Hands to the heavens, no man, no one. Yes, glorious destiny. Every day, women and men become legends. Sins that go against our skin become blessings. The movement is a rhythm to us. Freedom is like religion to us. Good morning, my brothers and sisters of Christ. Good morning. Good morning. 104 years ago, 22 women on the campus of Howard University came together for a call bigger than themselves. You see, it started with Mother Suffrage. And then, and went to civil rights. These women of Delta Sigma Theta Sorority Incorporated, yeah, they marched next to the activists who fought for the freedoms we have today. So we have to pay homage to the African Americans who paved the way. We say thank you, Claudette Cole. We say thank you, Paul Rogers. We say thank you, Harriet Tubman. We say thank you, Sojourner Truth. My brother, Dr. Martin Luther King, you are the reason why our children have a dream. Yeah. So we say thank you that we're free at last, free at last. Thank God Almighty, we are free at last.
street just dough. My knees getting weak and my gun might blow, but we gon' be our. Can we say amen for that, amen? Have we truly been spoiled today? You got a salvation, you got a step show. And uh, I believe I'm about to introduce to you somebody who got...